Okay, so I did a video, I think it was last year now, when X64 compatibility first came to the ARM processor in Windows 10. Uh, I had a Pro X then and I, I, I showed you kind of what it was like there. Um, so we're going to look at it again, now Windows 11 is out, this is on the beta branch and so the first thing of note is that Photoshop is now native to ARM, which is great. <coughs> you can see it opens relatively quickly, Photoshop's never quick on, on any computer. There we go. And so we'll create a new A4 image. All loaded up. Uh, it takes a second to realize where it is. There we go. So our zooming's pretty good. Our brush response is really nice. Uh, even if we go to one of the mixed brushes, which is over here. We grab one of these and give it a reddish colour. You can see even that's running really quite nicely. Jitter is way less than it was in Windows 10. Just grab one of these. You can see moving diagonally relatively slowly. Really not a huge amount of jitter at all. Uh, there's probably some smoothing going on in Photoshop. But you can see that's, that's really nice. So with Photoshop comes Camera Raw, so this is a raw file from a Sony A6400. Hmm. The right click in Windows 11 is still crap. There we go. Uh, let's open that with Photoshop. <coughs> there we go, and so we can edit this in Camera Raw doing all the things we would normally do, and it's it's reasonably quick. I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to rely on this all the time, but you can see that's, that's pretty nice. And so we can edit this pretty high resolution RAW file, and we can open that up in Photoshop. And just so you can see there, canvas size is currently 6,000 by 4,000. So it's really great that Photoshop is native to ARM now. The problem is Adobe hasn't made Illustrator native to ARM. However, I found that you can just... Uh, Basically, I have ARM in, uh, Illustrator installed on my home computer and I just copied the files across and they run absolutely fine. So this is running under X64 emulation. So it's a little bit slower to start up. Not too bad. Um, and you can see I can just double click an AI file there. Now this is a, a pretty heavy file. Um, so it's not super quick here. And we've got some links that aren't aren't working, but there we go. We've got Illustrator opening up, and again, the brush tool is is, is working really nice and responsive. Everything else works quite nicely. We can, you know, grab parts and move them around. So we've got Illustrator. We've got Photoshop. Those are two of the main programs that we need. Office works natively, of course. Uh, in fact, the Pro X comes with the X64 version of Office installed. Uh, you have to download the ARM version from the web, but that works perfectly fine. You can see I've got Zotero in there too. That's fine, it runs super quick. Uh, what else have we got here? Blender, so this is the beta of Blender. This is version three. This is running entirely under emulation. <coughs> Startup times aren't quite as good as if it was native, but it's not bad. There we go. 
Interaction in the viewport is great. And we can go to Eevee. Takes a second to, to get there. Everything looks black, but that's just because the scene lights need enabling and you can see that's all working fine too, reasonably quickly. Ah, I mean, it's, it's a cube. We can bring in the Suzanne monkey. Rotate this around. That's all looking pretty good. Viewport navigation is still great. And we can go to the shaded view. And we can even switch to cycles, although I really wouldn't recommend this, but you can see it works fine. The viewport is not great, but it's usable. And let's just send that back there and we can render. Rendering takes ages. Uh, this is not quick, but you can edit scenes here and then send them to another computer for rendering pretty easily. We can even give this something. Let's try and make this scene just a little bit more complicated here. Let's add a bit of this. Let's create a more complex material, maybe something reflective. Let's get 0.1 in there and let's see how that looks. So now we've added this reflective part. Uh, it would probably help if I zoomed the camera out, but you can see we've got reflections and everything in there. It's fine. It's doing everything. We're not seeing any crashes. And as I said, the viewport is still super responsive, uh, which is awesome. It would be nice if, if Blender made an ARM native version, but this is good enough for work on the road. And then the last thing to show you is our Android apps, which are available in the beta. And so let's see, got the Kindle app installed here. First time you load an Android app, it has to start up the Windows subsystem for Android. That takes a little bit of time. After that, it sits in the background, uh, but it does take up resources when it's sat there. There we go, the Kindle app works super smooth. It's, it's, it's much smoother than it was on my Surface Go 2 uh, because it's, it's uh, running on ARM. And so there's Darwin's Origin of Species. And we can do all the things you would do in, in the Kindle. You can change the themes. Let's see, change the colors. And that's all great. So Photoshop works great, Illustrator works well enough, Blender works well enough, and things like Word, PowerPoint are all blazing fast. I mean, honestly, faster than my main desktop computer. These things are just so quick. People last time asked me what game performance is like. I haven't tried games on here. You do not buy a Pro X to game on. Um, but as you can see, this is pretty much up to par now for a really nice work machine. Uh, as a secondary device, you're still going to want a big desktop somewhere if you, if you do heavy powered stuff. Hope that was useful to you. All the best.